نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم وعلى آل الطيبين الطاهرين إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبس منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم النكاح نصف الإيمان وفي موضع آخر النكاح من سنتي فمن رغب عن سنتي فليس مني أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام Last week we spoke about the biography of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as when he was 20 years old he has made a treaty, a covenant, a what called Hilf al-Fudul and we have to discuss about the background of Hilf al-Fudul and we spoke the purpose of making Hilf al-Fudul is those are oppressed Muslim in the society we shall help them and those are Zalim oppressor we shall take actions against them this was the purpose of Hilf al-Fudul because of sincerity and integrity his personality the Kufar Quraysh non-believer they gave him title as Sadiq al Amin the truthfulness and trustworthy. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam grew up with the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was free from all kind of mistakes. Now, at the age of 25, there was a great event happened in the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was married with his beloved wife Khadija bint Khwailid radiallahu ta'ala anha. The background of marriage was that Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha was very honorable, very high status businesswoman that time. Not only a businesswoman, she was very, very rich in the society and very high status. So she used to do business in the Sham and Yaman and behalf of her she chosen some intellectual men from the committee who support them to do her business trips and not everyone was very trustworthy some of them are dishonest with her communicative competence that's why she is looking somebody trustworthy and truthfulness who will do run her business behalf of her and she already found out about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his characteristic his personality his dedication his communication with consumer once he is a competent person she know before because therefore they gave him title as Sadiq al Amin in the community and society. So she offered Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to do business behalf of her. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, of course, he accept, his, accept her purpose and he was engaged the business of Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha. And Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha sent Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to Asham and with his company she also sent her slaves Maisara with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Maisara was the slave of Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha from the beginning Maisara was impressed with the characteristic of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from the lineage of Quraysh, the leader of the Quraysh. So his personality, his status, his reputation is unique because he is from the lineage of the leader of the Quraysh dynasty. And Maisara is a slave of Khadija. 
even though he was a high status man still he is sitting with my sara he is talking with my sara he is eating with my sara so my sara was impressed you know normally if you work in a company you will not often see the boss boss will act like a boss so when those are workers they will not even see the boss even in six months or a year and many people they don't know who is the boss so Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam great personality and he is sitting with the slave of Khadija eating and talking and Maisara was impressed to see the noble character of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam on the journey he also noticed the communicative competence with consumer how he discussed with them how he sell the goods of Khadija the Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam did another very intelligent thing which is this which is when he taken goods from Makkah to sell to Asham so after selling all goods he did not return back with the pocket of money he bought some other different type of goods from Asham which is difficult to find in the city of Makkah so he bought some different type of materials some goods from Asham and he brought it and he sell it in city of the Makkah so what happened this year Khadija became double profits double profits came from the business so already my Sarah is impressed and Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha became very delighted very happy that I got a very honest person very honorable person and I uh, got more double profit in this time, these trips. Then Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha impressed and amazed with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And she chosen her best friend, Nafisa bint Munabbi. Nafisa was the best friend of Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha. She chosen, she insisted to her best friend to go to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam behalf of mine and propose him that I want to get married with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. When Nafisa bint Munabbi, the friend of Khadija, reached to the Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and proposed him, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam also impressed with Khadija because Tunkahul Maratu li arba. When you choose to marry a lady, see the four things, high status, wealth, beauty, those things and religion things, Hazfar Fizat al Din. They also follow the peace of religious of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. The Khadija radiallahu ta'ala now also from high status lineage from the Quraysh dynasty. So everything was remained in Khadija radiallahu ta'ala now. And she was widow because her husband was passed away. So many people are proposing her to marry. She keep rejecting, rejecting everyone. But Nafisa was shocked and surprised when Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha chosen to marry Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa The later one, Abdullah ibn Abbas, Hamza and Abu Talib himself delivered the khutbah of the nikah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa It was amazing nikah. Amazing. Any new couple can get knowledge about the married life. Married couple can get knowledge from the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Khadija bint Khwailid radiallahu ta'ala. It's a romantic married life story. 25 years Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never married any other of his wives until Khadija died. Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha, her standing was different. All the wife of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is Ummahatul Mu'mineen, our mother. But Khadija is unique. Her standing, her speciality in the sight of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was very unique and very different. So marriage is sunnah and nikahu min sunnati. I started in the beginning. Famandra ridan sunnati falaisa min. It is sunnah. All the prophet was married except two prophets. 
Arba'um min sunan al mursaleen All the Prophet has four sunnah, one of them is nikah. And the Prophet said also, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and nikah of nisful iman is part of iman. So nikah is sunnah. All the Anbiya alayhi wa was married except two Prophet, Jesus, peace be upon him, and Yahya alayhi salatu wa sallam, Isaac. They, they didn't marry because one of the reasons they was passed away early state of their life. In general, nikah is a great sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we should do nikah inshallah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not like two halal things. These two things are halal, permissible in Islam, but Allah does not happy with these two things. Allah does not like. One is begging, to asking sawal to the people. Al yadul uliya khairun man yadul sufla. The upper hands is better than lower hands. So always keep your, our mentality to donate someone, not wish something from anybody else. Allah does not like begging, but it's, it's halal. But situation, if somebody disabled, blind, or not source of income, we should support them. They are allowed to ask, but in general, Allah does not like begging. Every gentleman should be mentality that I will work, I will earn money, I will surprise myself. I will not depend with anyone. This is the good mentality. And second thing is talaq. Broken marriage life is halal. It is a solution, but Allah does not like. Now time, divorce system is very wide, openly. Anybody quickly angry and decide to divorce. Even immigration I heard last year, they make a law that anybody can do divorce without reason. Before, when you want to divorce your wife or a wife want to de decide to divorce her husband, you need to provide a valid reason why you're going to do divorce. But now in UK, you are not entitled to show any valid reason. If you want to divorce, you can do divorce. Allah, it's sign of Qiyamah. So it is not in Islam. Islam said, Talaq is very far. If we have some misconception, misunderstanding between a couple, a husband, wife, what would, what should do, what Quran said, Quran does not say give talaq, no, talaq is far away. First step is, if we have any misunderstanding between husband and wife, Allah said, Quran said, Islam said, fa'izuhunna, fa'izuhunna, politely, Try to understand her, politely treat her, Islamic way, try to give nasiha to her that this is not nice, we should die together with one name. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala happy if a couple become together. When a husband and wife sit together, in the romantic moment, when they smile, the third person, Allah is smile, subhanahu Allah enjoy. ومن آياته أن خلق لكم من أنفسكم أزواجا لتسكنوا إليها وجعل بينكم مودة ورحمة. Allah like we should do together until death. The first step is not talaq. First step is فعزوهن. If if نصيحة not working, the second step is وحجروهن في المضاجع. Quran said you make separate your beds with your wife. Then what's a band? If you read, sleep separate beds few nights, the couple, they will miss each other. They will start miss each other. So they will make change their decision. They will start again together. This is the second step. If it doesn't work, the third step is Quran said, Talk to her or talk to him seriously. Even you can take her somewhere to holiday for one week for, for refreshment to increase love and mahabbat. Go to holiday for one week. What remove Strictly, seriously. You can also say, look, we have two children. Our life connected with our life. So think about our children. Think about ourselves. Think about yourself. Think about myself. So please be together. What remove Strictly. No talaq. If it doesn't work, the fourth step is Quran said, Fabasu hakaman min ahlihi wa hakaman min ahliha. 
find a guardian from the wife's side and find a guardian from husband's side and sit together in a family meeting and discuss about the matter. Inshallah, Allah will solve the problems. This is the fourth step. If it doesn't work, look, talaq is not coming yet. Talaq is far away. If it doesn't work, the fifth step, Quran says, then give one talaq in one month. How many talaq? One talaq in one month, one tuhur. One day in my mosque, one brother came and crying. I said, why are you crying? I said, Imam, please help me. I was very angry and I gave talaq to my wife. And I love her very much. I did a big mistake. She made me angry. I was, I said, people give talaq in angry situation anyway. So why you give talaq and how many talaq you give, him, give her? He said, a minimum 10 times I said talaq. I said, you have to give one talaq. Why you say 10 times? He said, I was very angry. She made me crazy. So I didn't know what I said. So minimum 10 times I said her talaq. This is not the sunnah way to do talaq. You have to do one talaq in one month. Still your husband wife. You gave one talaq but still husband wife. You can rujo. If it doesn't work one month, wait. Maybe she will change her mind. If it doesn't work the second month, you have to give another talaq. At talaq marratan. Another one month, wait. So after two months, you gave her two talaq. Still your husband wife. See, still your husband wife. You can return and be together until death. If it doesn't work after three months, this is the last and final talaq, will be third talaq. So when you give her third talaq in three months, that means what Quran says, فَإِن طَلَّقَهَا فَلَا تَحِلُّ لَهُ مِنْ بَعْدُ حَتَّى تَنْقِيَ زَوْجًا غَيْرًا This is end of your marriage. You will never ever allow to see her. You will not allow to talk to her. You are mahram. Finish. Only two situations you can be together. Again. What is the situation? Number one is if she married another person and if her second husband died, if she wants to come back return, you can accept. Or the second husband gave her talaq naturally. After five years, maybe the second husband also gave her talaq. If she wants to come return to you, you can marry her again. Otherwise, فَلَا تَحِلُّ لَهُ مِنْ بَعْدُ حَتَّى تَنْكِيَ زَوْدًا غَيْرًا so again, this is the end of the marriage. The again, I want to say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not like two things, two halal things. One is begging and the other one is talaq. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to be together. Those are married. So any couple can get knowledge from the marriage of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as he was loved her very much. It was very romantic. Very interesting moment they passed as Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa did not marry any other his wife until Khadija radiallahu ta'ala had died. One day, long time after their marriage and a long time after Hadid Aisha that time, Khadija was passed away. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa talking about Khadija. As I said, her speciality, her standing is unique from the other wife. So Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa talking about Khadija and Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha bit jealous. Why are you talking about this old lady? She eventually she was passed away. Why you keep reminding this old lady as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replaced you a beautiful young high status beautiful lady she indicated to herself because Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha was very beautiful very young so she indicated herself that Allah replaced you with something better than Khadija. Why you keep remaining? When Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam listened this word from her, his face was changed. His face became red. And he cried a lot. And he said, Aisha, do you know who was the Khadija? Do you know who? He said, Amanat bi hina kafaran nas. The Khadija was the person. She believed me. 
believe in me while the people disbelieve in me. And he said, وَصَدَّقَتْنِ حِينَ كَذَّبَ الْيَنَّاسِ She trusted in me while the people did belied me. And he also he said, وَأَشْرَكَتْنِ فِي مَالِهَا حِينَ حَرَمَنِ الْنَّاسِ And she helped and comforted me in person and wealth when the people of the community did not do this. Not only this, but also وَرَزَقَنِ اللَّهُ وَلَدَهَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted me awlad. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted me children through Khadija bin Tihwaylid radiyallahu ta'ala. Don't try to compare yourself with Khadija. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted them two sons and four daughters from Khadija radiyallahu ta'ala anha. Two sons is Al-Qasim, the, the oldest boy, and uh, Ibrahim, and uh, Qasim, Abdullah, and Ibrahim. The Ibrahim was later on, was born from uh, Media Kitbiya, her mother name. So two sons, Qasim and Abdullah, and four daughters in order, Zainab, Ruqayya, Umm Kulsum, and Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anhunna. And Abdullah was the youngest prince of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa so this was the beautiful family of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So later on he married, after her death, the marriage wasn't only for married life. It was supported. She helped other ladies. Someone's husband was passed away in jihad. Someone was very poor. So someone need help. This is where Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as a purpose of shelter, he married other. Otherwise, he only one lady he married to purpose of marriage is Khadija bin Tihwailid radiallahu ta'ala. So, <clears throat> we have to do dua for our family, for our wife, our children, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our happy life in this world and hereafter. We have to strongly do dua <clears throat> for our family and our wife. It is a prophetic teaching. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, do dua for your family and your children. اللهم زدنا ولا تنقصنا وأكرمنا ولا تهلنا وأعطنا ولا تحرمنا واسرنا ولا توسر علينا وارضنا وأرضنا يا كريم يا رب العالمين ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا يا مولانا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وجعل آخر كلامنا عند الموت لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت استغفرك وأتوب إليك الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد فإن خير الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم والشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا استنابا اللهم إنا نسألك إيمانا كاملا وعلما نافعا وعملا متقبلا ورزقا واسعا حلالا طيبا اللهم انصرنا فإنك خير الناصرين اللهم ارحمنا فإنك أرحم الراحمين اللهم افتح لنا فإنك خير الفاتحين اللهم ارزقنا فإنك خير الرازقين اللهم أعتق رقابنا من النار اللهم أعتق رقابنا من النار ورقاب آبائنا وأمهاتنا وأولادنا وأزواجنا وزرياتنا من النار اللهم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وأدخلنا الجنة مع المتقين والأبرار تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا يا مولانا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم وأقم الصلاة إن الصلاة كانت على المؤمنين كتابا مرقوتا